Hello, this is the ninth video in my playlist which I call Intro and it's an introduction to important concepts and theorems in mathematics. Today I want to talk about infinity. I'll start by just going on about what's not infinity, then we'll talk about one form of infinity and then we'll see that there's a second type of infinity as well. So here's a set that contains three elements, A, B and C. So because the number of elements in the set is either a counting number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., or it's zero, we say that it's a finite set. Good. Now let's look at another set. This is the set of counting numbers, and the set of counting numbers is not finite. If you just work through what I just said in terms of finite sets, you can't do that in this case, and so we would say that this is an infinite set. Now let's consider the set of integers, which I've represented here, and you can see just one middle part of it, it goes on. For an, there's an infinite numbers to the left and to the right, where I've got the three dots on both sides, but in the middle we've got negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1 and 2. Now the number of integers is also infinite and in, in fact it's the same infinity as the number of counting numbers. We say it's countably infinite. So I want to show you how we would, how we would demonstrate that the number of integers is countably infinite. What we do is we work out a rule that links every counting number with a unique integer and in turn every integer is uniquely linked to a counting number. So one way we could do this is to start at that middle zero and work our way sort of out both sides. So we'll map the counting number 1 to 0, 2 to 1, 3 will map to negative 1, 4 will map to 2, 5 will map to negative 2, and this process can obviously continue as long as we want. In fact, you can actually work out an algebraic expression that shows us how I've done the linking. We can say that, we'll call it a function f, we'll say f of n equals n on 2 if n is even, and f of n equals negative n minus 1 on 2 if n is odd, and that will do exactly the linking that I've described. So in this case here, where we can find this link between the counting numbers and the set that we're interested in, so that each counting number is linked to a unique element of the set, and each element of the set is linked to a unique element of the counting numbers, we say that this set is countably infinite in size. So there's this concept of countable infinity, and we would regard all of the sets that are countably infinite as having the same size. Now sometimes we can take this a little bit further than you might first think. So now let's go from the integers, let's go to the, the set of all positive fractions, also known as the set of all positive rational numbers. So let's think about the number of positive fractions. Once again that's infinite, but is it countably infinite? Well it turns out that it is, and we can demonstrate that in this way. I'll create this table here where I I basically list every single fraction. And to do that I'll call um, this, we'll have here the numerators, and here the denominators, and every fraction is made up of a numerator and a denominator, they're both counting numbers, so I've listed them, I've started to list them here. Now the next thing is that we don't regard the fraction two-fourths as being different to the fraction one-half. So what I'm going to do is start to cross out all of those fractions that are not simplified, or all of those fractions where the numerator and denominator have a GCD or a greatest common divisor not equal to one. So all of these ones here, we'll just start knocking them out. Now we can do our mapping from the counting numbers to what we've got left of all these simplified fractions. So we'll start here with 1 on 1, then we'll go, uh, let's go across to a half, then down to 2 on 1, 
then we'll go down to three on one, and then we'll skip across two on two, because that's not included, and we get to one third. Then we go across to one quarter, down to two thirds, down to three on two, down to four on one. And we can continue this process of going back and forwards in these ever increasing length paths, and, 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 and the process will work. Now, if you want, you can actually work out some mathematical expression uh, that will link the counting numbers to all the fractions. I haven't done that here, but clearly you could do that. Um, I've started that process. So the set of rational numbers is countably infinite, just like it was for the integers and just like it was for the counting numbers. But we'll see in a sec that that's not the case for the real numbers. But before I do that, I just point out that apart from this playlist, I've got other playlists where I go through test and exam questions for first and second year university level math students. Also got a playlist on how things work using only basic high school maths and a couple of other playlists of a whole lot of fun stories and things about mathematics. So have a look at them if you're interested. So now I'm actually going to make things a little bit even harder for myself. I'm going to make, I'm going to look just at the real numbers between 0 and 1. So now I'm going to show you that this is not an accountably infinite set. And to do that we'll use proof by contradiction. So what we'll do is we'll say suppose it is countably infinite. That means that we can link up the counting numbers with all the real numbers between 0 and 1 in the way that we've discussed uh, previously. So if we listed the numbers, we'd start out here with maybe the first one is this number, the second number is this number, the third number is this number. And that would go on. Now someone pointed out that there's a fatal flaw here. There's a fatal flaw, and that is that we, we can always construct a number that's not on the list between 0 and 1. And the way that we do that is we take 0, we put the decimal point, then for the first decimal uh, number, we take a number that's different to the first decimal number of the first number. So I'll do this. Then for the second decimal number of our new number, we're going to make it different to the second decimal number of the second number. And we continue this process always just uh, using a different number. And the fact is this number is not anywhere in this list because it's different to every number in the list because we've changed everyone's everyone's it's different from every number by at least one decimal place a uh, decimal number somewhere so this new number is not in the list so we can only conclude because of this fatal flaw that the set of real numbers between 0 and 1 is not countably infinite and so we call that uncountably infinite so there we go there's at least two forms of infinity and uh, perhaps, there's, perhaps there's more. So I hope that's given you a little bit of insight and, and sort of started you on the process of understanding better the mathematics of infinity. Thanks for watching.